take of means, but we hear by the grace of God. Amen. And the presses that we're going to press him, we believe that he received it Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless every one of us that we are able to be here. Amen. We're not listening to the voice of the enemies Amen. to say that we stay behind. Amen. So, before we're going to start, let us bow our head in prayer. Our Heavenly Father in heaven, we're thankful to you for this day that you alone has made. Mm -hmm. God, we're thankful that you made it possible for us to be here together to praise and to glorify your name. Mm -hmm. You call unto us to ask of you whatever we need for life. Jesus Christ will say you are already to tell the Father mm -hmm. to provide it for us. Mm -hmm. We believe and we know that when you take it to Father mm -hmm. and he will not instead not to sign it for you to leave it to us. Mm -hmm. We give you glory and thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Thank you that your presence is here with us mm -hmm. and thank you that you receive the glory for all things that are going to take place today and days ahead. Mm -hmm. Glory be to your name for what you have done it. And what you're going to do it more and more in our life and the life of the loved one. Mm. Thank you for the soul that are present here. Mm. Thank you for those that are not able to come here today. Mm. The blessing that you blessed us is going to them as well as going to the children of Israel and you fight their enemies for them. Mm. Glory be to your name forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 He's alive, amen, he's alive, Jesus is alive forever, he's alive, oh amen, he's alive, amen, he's alive, Jesus is alive forever, he's alive, he's alive. is always the same with the life of believers. Amen. Because when you believe in Jesus, you don't need to go mm. left or right. You mm. are focused. Like if you see what the sporters are doing for sheep, mm -hmm. for the horse that they want to run rest, mm. they blind their eyes so, and the horse is focused straight so that he can run and win the rest to the mm -hmm. honor. Mm -hmm. So are the children of God that believe in God. Mm -hmm. When you believe in God, what people may say, the criticism, they criticize you, or they criticize Jesus Christ, or whoever, you focus on him. Amen. Because nobody can change your life Amen. except Jesus Amen. Christ who Amen. made you and give you the life. Amen. I see it in my life. People would tell you, oh, your church are not doing this. What is the routine of your church? What have you people been doing? And I give a short answer. I say, come and see. Mm -hmm. That is the answer that Amen. Peter gave to Andrew. Mm -hmm. So that is the only thing you can give. Mm -hmm. Because when you come in, you will see if we are preaching the word of God. Mm -hmm. And after the church service, if you come in, I will ask you, what do you see? Mm -hmm. Because many churches are going to group themselves today because they want to be talking about sowing seed mm. and dancing. At the end of the day, they are showing the kind car they drive, mm -hmm. the kind clothes they wear, mm -hmm. 
the kind of food they want to go and eat for some restaurants, some all those things are not bad. But it's bad for one thing if you not keep God first. Amen. That's the bad thing in it. Because it says, trust in me and remember me first for all you are doing daily. Mm. If you do it for my glory. So if it's not for the glory of God, that is where the bad is. Mm. Yes. So okay, we're going to worship the Lord for hymn number 51. Please. I believe we all know this thing very well. Down yeah. <coughs> at the cross where the Savior died, down where the peace no sin has Him forever, amen. 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 Okay, we're going back again for 150. Yeah. 
greatest happy day a human being can have for life. Mm -hmm. The day you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have a different mood. Mm -hmm. From your physical body to the spiritual body, mm -hmm. you say happy day because he took you down to heaven. Yes. Uh, we're going to go to the words of introduction. Words of introduction, we're going to read for Psalms. Book of Psalm 103. You to our time that goes fast. Okay. Psalm 103, we're going to read from verse 1 to 5. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities? Who heal all thy diseases? Who redeem thy life from destruction? Who crowned thee with loving kindness mm -hmm. and tender mercies who satisfy thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let's be seated please. Without wasting more time we are seeing what David has saying for this I always astonish when I read the book of David mm -hmm. because it's full with warm happiness. Mm -hmm. It's full with encouragement that even though you are sunk in the mud, you will be able to stand mm -hmm. up. Not that other prophets and apostles or kings, they are not written good things. Mm -hmm. but everyone are written according to the will of God in them. Mm -hmm. And according to what they experience in their life, when David wrote all what he wrote, I, mean, I was sit down for one day, I think, within myself, that I don't think that somebody that God called can encounter affliction. This was my personal thought in me. But when I read the book of David, one after another deeply, I see that even when God calls you, you're going to encounter affliction. But being that is the one that called you, is already overcome for you. Amen. And then it's like when we believe in God, when we believe in God, 
you are not your own. Because nothing you could think about or suffer about or say, oh, how can I do this? I said, believe in me. Trust in me. Remember when he told Moses to hand over to Joshua. Before he told Moses, he already instructed Joshua, I handle the course. Go no better than you will not want. And Joshua was called the children of Israel like. He said, God has promised me. And as he promised me, promising every one of you. But one thing I want you to do for me, choose. If you want to worship the God of where you come out, you can go back. Mm -hmm. But for me and my household, I worship the God of heaven. Mm -hmm. So David here called himself, called the children of Israel, and said, bless the Lord. Amen. He said everything that within him, mm -hmm. from head to toe, from his household, he said, bless the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because he see the hand of God for his calling. I always tell people, people say that, oh, King David was this king. I said, well, God see the heart before he chose King David. Mm -hmm. He was not the only son of Jesse, mm -hmm. but he loved to choose him. Mm -hmm. As well, God see somewhere in the house of Eli. He was, when Samuel done there, he was not hoping to be a prophet. He was doing the normal service that a child can serve the master. God said, you are my prophet. Mm -hmm. So, even when Samuel was meet David, he was not convinced that David would be a king. But God said, I have a king there. Go there and ordain king for me. So David said, all things he mentioned who is satisfied him for all things all the goodness all the manners all the life that he lived all the people that he governed he said press the lord that is what the children and uh it, it takes some time now i'm not quicker to pray to god say i'm asking you for this i'm ask, i ask god say thank you for what you have done mm -hmm. for my life. Mm -hmm. Thank you for what you've done for my family. Mm -hmm. Thank you for what you've done for my church. Thank you for what you've done for the loved one far and near. Mm -hmm. And God, I surrender all to you. Mm -hmm. That is my prayer. Yeah. Then I will find what to conclude and say amen. He knows what he has to fix mm -hmm. for all those praises. Mm -hmm. David, when he praised the Lord, he said his soul and all that within him Bless the holy name of God. He said, he sh we should not forget his benefits when he takes us all around and around and around. If I tell you the benefit of God in me, you, you will not, a day and a year is not enough. But God is wonderful for his children. Amen. Yesterday, as I come back for work in the night, to be honest with you, my voice was not open for the cold. I was shameful. My wife was asking me, I said, okay, I said, all is well. Don't worry. I covered myself, entered the bed. He said, do you like to drink? I said, no, it's fine. So this morning, when I wake up, I wake up for another mood. I talked to God. And I talked, I turned as I talked to her, I said, only you can pray because my force is not altar for me to pray. But pray. God is hearing the prayer. Amen. She prayed the prayer. This morning, I regained my energy. Amen. It's a glory of God. Amen. Because no doctor can be able to cure me the way God has cured his children. Amen. Yes. So, tell me now what will make me not to press the Lord, the living God of heaven. Amen. For when I see. So, when we... It's like when we go out this morning, I asked my wife that you have a doctor appointment today. She said, yes. I said, okay, what time? She mentioned the time. I said, I forget what she talked in between. I said, I'm not misquoted people who go to the doctor. It's very fine. You need to go to the doctor. Then I told her that I don't know the dialogue for the doctors so much. Because not that I cannot go. Sometimes I take my clients there. But for me to get my personal appointment with doctors, it's a little bit hard me. I don't know. Maybe it's the, my lifestyle or whatever. But if 
Things is not so heavy for me. I cannot go to a doc, consult doctor, say this and that and that. Because I see some people coming out, oh, they say I should not eat this, I should not eat that, 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 I should not eat that. And I ask them, have you been eating that before? I say yes. That's okay. Why, how was he out it before? He say, oh, he was good. I said, why doctor see now that it's not good for your system anymore? Okay, I'm not misquoted them that it cannot good for your, it may not good for your system. <clears throat> but when doctor take all this away from you, what did he or she want you to eat? I said, the only thing I can do for what I eat, God show me what I can eat. I pray for that food because God is the one that gives it. And then I eat. If the food not like me, my body will tell us. Mm -hmm. Then I keep up. But when the doctor go and mention maybe you was eating seven types of food, he tell you to reject five. So how do you going to live? So I said, you have, when you believe in God, believe with all your heart. Believe with all your soul. Believe with all your trust. Like David said here, he said, he's the one that redeemed him. And he brings his life out from destruction. Loving kindness and tender mercies of God is surrounded all of us that believe in him. God will not stand up to destroy us because he satisfied our lives with all the good things. He renew our strength like eagles. This is what he said. One thing we need to be assured that all the promises of God is not in vain. <clears throat> None that is in vain. Amen. Millions of promises are for this book. But human beings are shaking not to claim. Even when you shake not to claim, Jesus Christ he give it to us. Because his loving kindness, his loving kindness and tender mercies is forever. So this is what we have to do and we have to trust and we have to believe. Amen. May God help us to believe and trust fully in him wherever we are and whatever situation we may face. Amen. That that situation is not passing God power. Amen. Yes, that is what we have to do. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Then <clears throat> our time is going far. Our Father God in heaven, we thankful to you that you never fail us. God, we come to you that as you renew us, we continue to press and glorify you on you. Thank you, God, for your mercy. Thank you, God, for your blessings. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you, God, for your strength. Thank you, God, for the salvation that you gave to human beings. We say glory be to your name. God, we're going to eat the food of the Holy Spirit, which is your words. To, as you use this word to redeem us and strengthen us and guiding us. Thank you that you are here with us and you bless the preacher that's going to preach your words. And thank you for the ears of the hearers. Thank you that you are the only one that can give us understanding and power to able to do what you want us to do. Glory be to your name that you are here with us and you're going to be continue with us the whole of our life on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. I'm also greeting you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is good to, to look back and to see what God is doing, not only in our lives, but in the lives of people who went, who, who were witness of Jesus, of, of God before us, like the King David, when he's talking about uh, uh, his soul bless the Lord, and let everything within himself bless him. Because you know that it is one of the greatest battles we are facing. It is sometimes when you're in the church, you're just feeling wonderful. But when you walk out, 
try your start. You think so you're thinking about this, about that. And the devil just coming up with too much pressure. And we find some time uh, just starting to cry to God for no reason. Because we forgot what God said while we are reading his, uh, his holy book. So let's go anyhow straight away to the word of God. And we are going to read again uh, Revelation 14 verse uh, 6 and 7. And then uh, that's the first Revelation 14. And there saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and town and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth, and the sea and the fountains of waters. Amen. Amen. Can you take Ecclesiastes to chapter 12? I think here in English it is verse 13. We had it uh, Last time, Ecclesiastes 12. I don't think they have done that. Yeah. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole, the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandment, for this is the whole duty of man. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you again tonight, Lord, for the grace you shown to each one of us. Amen. For this word of uh, introduction your servant has uh, preached to us, Lord. I'm encouraging each one of us to look at the Lord, no matter what can, can come across our ways. We know that, Lord, we don't have power by ourselves. We don't have no strength, we don't, no, we don't even don't know the way. Because you said you have a way. You have a love, a love, a life. You have a truth. Lord, we are just uh, your followers. And we are just depending on you. Sometimes the bodies can just feel weak. Like your servant was saying, he didn't have no voice when he came back home last night. And this morning, by the grace of God, you made, you done that wonderful miracle. Because we self, we could not even notice that you had a, a hoarse voice. But you healed him completely. Amen. A total deliverance. That is how we can know that we are, we have a living God. Amen. We can speak to him and he can answer our prayers. Amen. Lord, come in our midst, Lord, and renew our strength. Amen. Mine personally, you know, because I'm at this uh, bottom line where I'm waiting to, Lord, for the water to be, uh, to be shaken, Lord, to be moved for better. I can be thrown inside. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you came by the, by, the, by the pool. You told to the man, do you want to be healed? He said, yes, but I don't have nobody to help me to get in the water. When the angel is descending in it, he said, I'm he who can do it here. And we done it for him. Amen. So, Lord, do remember our prayer and our your servant this evening. Amen. Help me, Lord, but for the preaching for tonight. Amen. And give me the strength, Lord, for in everything. Amen. As you have prayed in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be, may be seated, please. The topic of uh, the message we have been listening to these days, Sunday or during the week, all of them are going together. God identified oh, uh, the fear of the Lord. Those things are helping us to see how when you go through experience like what we are talking just now. They are helping us to be, to be strong. You know, David, when he was, uh, 
he went to fight the enemy Goliath. He could recall what God did for him. He said he had that confidence because he saw the hand of the Lord when he went to fight the lion. Amen. When he went to fight the bear. He said when I was there, it was not me. The Lord did it. Amen. So he could have a sense the courage, more courage not to go to fight the giant who was standing in, his, uh, in the presence of the whole army of the Lord. So that is why the main thing the people must have as we are reading it here, it is the duty, or in this uh, book it is said that this is appropriate. Let me take it in this, uh, uh, this amplified Bible. Uh, I forgot how it is said exactly. But it is important, it is something every family, every man, should have in his life, by saying here that uh, um, this applies to every man here. Yeah. The few, I'm going to read it again. Um, when all has been heard, the end of the matter is fear God. Worship him with all filled reverence, knowing that he is Almighty God, and keep his commandment, for this applies to every man. They didn't speak about the believers. They didn't speak about the about a certain uh, uh, class of people, but this is for everybody. Every it is applies to everyone, even to the animals, because when God uh, made the invitation for people to come around the mountain of Sinai, He didn't call only the human being. He called also the animals, and the animals were troubling the same way as the children of Israel. When God is speaking, when he came even on the mountain, the mountain was shaking as the people. Everybody was struggling. And Jesus is saying, no, I was reading this thing again, <coughs> these last days. When Jesus is speaking to his disciples, said, if you stay to this, not the mountain, but to this tree, it is in the book of um, Luke chapter 17, I think. If you say to the tree, uh, root yourself out and go, plant yourself in the sea, it will obey you. You know, I was just looking at okay, this. He said, you, if you speak to the tree, uh, tell it, move from where you are, and go, plant yourself in the water, it will obey you. So I'm all saying that so the tree can understand. The tree can hear the voice of a man. And the tree can, can, can move uh, away. One day someone was telling me, I don't know what thing, but I also then uh, to say so. I don't know which, what kind of uh, things was involved. He said he was sitting in his, um, uh, by his bed when he was a young man. And there was some, uh, a, a chicken was with, uh, with some chicks. And uh, just uh, in there, you know how we live in Africa. And he said, what he was saying, he was hearing the, 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 chick, the chicken <clears throat> speaking to the chick in a human language. Look at him. I said, you know, there is something which you cannot understand. But when God is speaking, he said, that he's calling as witness the earth and the heaven. Listen, because the Lord is speaking. So the fear of the Lord, it is not only applying to the human beings. But all, even the animals, you know, uh, the ass of, uh, of Balaam, this donkey went into a, he, he was going, <clears throat> and God didn't want him to go there. The donkey saw the angel, and they didn't want to, to pursue the, the, the trip. And so Balaam, who was blind, he could not see it. But the, uh, even the, the donkey spoke to him, said, why did you beat me already two times? What did I do? Why are you behaving like this? Because this animal could see the angel of the Lord and it has a faith for the angel of the Lord. What is applying to each one of uh, the human being, it is to have first the fear of the Lord. It is not what you have as money or as whatever you can have, but what God is re uh, requesting from each person it is to know him Amen. and to know that he's our maker, he's our creator. 
And for now, we the believers who accept to work with God, there's this uh, thing which the devil is doing. I was listening to Mother Frank again and today in some preaching assignment. What the devil wants to do and will that to do, it is to take the people away of the reality of the promises of God. So that you can forget what God is doing. And sometimes the people are starting to be here in a way that they forget that God just put them on earth. And that is why I want to bring you back to the as a church. Because, you know, we have so many churches. We have so many believers in the world. But sometimes when you are looking at people, you wonder, where are the true believers? Where is the church of Jesus Christ? You know, we know we can recognize the Muslim easily. Not because of a belief, but how they are dressing. How they are doing things. Yes, obviously, some is a Muslim. They, get, they let the, the bird grow, grow, and different kind of things. That is not really nothing. I can do the same. I can cut my hair in a certain way. I can dress in a certain way. But this is not being a Christian. A Christian is a, it is a, it is a life. Wow. It is a testimony. So that is why... <clears throat> We are reading last time, I'm going to start from that in Hebrews chapter 12. Let's go back and you're going to move forward. Let's start from verse 18, but I'm going to, to, to stop today on verse 25. From verse 18, Moses, Hebrews 12. Let there be any fornicator or profane person, as is so, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. You see, brother, this is not a message addressed to unbelievers, addressed to the people in the church, to the believers. He saw was in the same church, if I can call so, as, a, as Jacob. They have the same pastor. The father, the father, the same God. But they said it was a profound man. He sold his birthright for just a, for, for a, for a grade, for, for a meal. For you know that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, thought he sought it carefully with tears. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burn with fire, nor unto blackness, and darkness, and tempest. And the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words, which voice they had heard, entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more. For they could not endure that which was commanded, and if, and if so much as a beast touch the mount, mountain, it shall be stoned, or trust true with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I am exceedingly free and quick. But here, yeah, this is what they saw, we saw it uh, last uh, week. It is what they saw in the natural. God called them to them, uh, to him, so in. He said, I brought you on to me, so that you may hear my voice, you may hear my words. And now when the Holy Spirit is taking the same thing, is applying it to the church of a new covenant, of a new testament, which we are. And he's saying now, for ye are come unto, uh, no, 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 where is it? Yeah. For ye are come unto Mount Zion. No, 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 what? Yeah, is it correct? Right For ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an, an uh, innumerable company of angels. He said, But where we have come, because it's our. Uh, yeah, this is correct. We have come to Zion, but this is another another city. It is not Sinai. We have approached a mountain and this mountain 
We don't have a time to, to explain all the scripture about the, the mountain of the Lord. Where he is going to, it is going to be his dwelling place with the humankind in the millennium. You know, if you go in the book of Ezekiel, you see how they are talking about this temple which will be built for to where God is going to be dwelling with his people in the millennium time. But he's saying here, uh, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of the Lord. See that you, uh, 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 yeah. See that you refuse not. Uh, see that you refuse not him that speak, but for evil escape not who refuse him that speak on earth. Much more shall not we escape if you turn away from him that speak from heaven. I want to stop for a moment here. So now there are something which happened. On Mount Sinai the time, God called them so they may hear his voice. When God is uh, gathering his people, there's a purpose. It is not just for, uh, for a show, but God has something to say. Exactly like when you come to church, God must provide some food in the person who is there to give to his people. He cannot call you in his house for no reason. Yeah. I notice it myself and, uh, as a minister. When, <clears throat> you know, when uh, I was, uh, we went lately uh, for my mother-in-law funeral. When I'm there, I don't try to get to push myself in the program where I'm making. Uh, my, 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 my brother-in-law, everybody's making there. Just let them do what they want. So we went with, uh, for this watching, the last uh, say farewell to the mom before we put her in the coffin. And I was there, my wife, we were the first person. And then we opened the door, so we get in. We went there, people are crying, so we just uh, have say the last word, and then I went to sit down. People are coming in, sitting, sitting. And then after I had to talk, everybody sitting like this. Even nobody near do something. I said, Lord, this one. I have to do something. I just stood up. I opened my Bible. I started just speaking. You know, uh, when God called you, when, what happened? Even if you don't prepare nothing, you didn't have to prepare something. Yeah. Something has been given, it's given, it will be given there because it is a channel. A channel God is using. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And I spoke. And I'm speaking even then. They say somewhere, uh, one can say, Brother Paul, thank you for the message. You know, sometimes I say, why are you sending thank you? Because I didn't prepare nothing. I just opened my mouth and things started to come out. Amen. Coming out, coming out, and we were just what was needed. And this was the first time we are seeing those kind of things. When you have God call you and he knows that his people need something, he will speak to them. Amen. But speaking to them, he will speak to the channel him is choosing. And uh, I notice it a lot of time. Even once, I remember when your uh, brother was uh, giving the testimony, testimony that when he comes here, sometimes he didn't prepare just things, just uh, the message just coming out in that same way. So when God is uh, gathering his people, there's a purpose to it. When people came to Jesus Christ, when he was on earth, he said, "You saw a lot of people when you when you when you you read, you read Matthew chapter five. So he just went on the mountain. He said he starts speaking to them. Then he said that he did to prepare the meeting. He didn't prepare nothing. He started just giving them the instructions. Amen. When 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 Peter in the day of Pentecost, he didn't prepare his preaching. Then." People came, the Holy Spirit came along, people come to come said, what is going on? What is going on? And Peter just stood up and gave this message, so strong message we still have until today. Amen. It was a prophetic message. Why? Because when God is, it is not Peter who called people, it is God. Amen. He just attracted people. He just, it was an attraction. When they came, he gave a message. Amen. And 3,000 souls 
turn themselves to God. Amen. That's not Peter. So, brother, after God spoke on the people on the mountain, it was shaking. The animals were troubling. Everybody was shaking. Now God is saying, but now, Someone is speaking to us from heaven. It is what you have to understand. It is not, a man cannot speak to us. He cannot even save our souls. Nobody can do it. Who knows what is in your heart? Who knows what are the problem you have in your heart? Me, I was, I was, I was saying, I was not there. My wife, did you know it? No. You spoke with a sister, she didn't tell you. We didn't know, even if he knew what we were going to do. We could not help. Just say, oh, brother, maybe take some, some hot tea with lemon. We could say it'd be funny. We could, but to bother him, it was God alone. Amen. Amen. That is something so. Someone is speaking to us from heaven. It is not a minister. It is only God. Amen. How many times did you hear people coming to church? Say, brother, what we're preaching to is what's, what's regarding the problem I have in my heart. Well, what you said, it was exactly what was disturbing me. How, could, how can I know what is what disturbing you? I'm just a human like you. If you don't tell me, I won't know it. But the one who searched the heart knows everything from the man. And he can just not only tell you what you have as a problem, even give you the solution to the Amen. problem. Amen. So now, in the book of, uh, we are going to talk, uh, verse 25, it is what, uh, verse, uh, in my French, it is, uh, yeah, 25 and 26, uh, uh, I did read it. In the book of First Peter, chapter 1, I'm going to read, uh, um, Yes. Can we read the, the verse from uh, uh, verse 10 to verse 12, please? It's just a small portion of verse 12 I would like to, to highlight here. Verse, uh, verse, uh, verse 10. Or which salvation the prophet hath inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you? Searching what? Or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Unto him it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Mr. Montes. The preach the gospel unto you with the Holy Spirit sent down from heaven which with things that the angel desired to look into. For them to have the one speaking from heaven <coughs> is the Holy Spirit sent from heaven speaking unto humankind all the things which you don't know. It is what Jesus Christ said. <clears throat> that when the Holy Spirit will come, the Comforter, He will teach you everything, no. remind you what I have said, and tell you things to come. Amen. And who is the Holy Spirit? I'm going to uh, bring it with me or not. I don't know. Uh, I had a, a brochure. I don't know if I have it. I have it. Uh, um, I will be reading to you the, in the coming days a lot of quotations from the preachings and the, from Brother Fang and Brother Banam to now because you know that it is the message God gave us in the time which we are learning from comparing to the Bible to know what the Bible is saying and to make explanations about what things it is for us to search to compare to read the bible and to see what we are teaching if it is true because god we know that god sent 
verse 2 men for the preparation of the church before the rapture. And it is the duty for ministers, for the believers to read and to study those things. It is the only, you cannot say, okay, I'm believing because he said, no, search yourself. Because even Jesus Christ said, you are searching the scriptures because the thing in them you have an eternal life, okay. but you are speaking, talking about me. So we have the same responsibility. And we believe that those two ministers are from God. Amen. And God sent them down here. Listen to what, what he's saying. The words of warning addressed to us are found in Hebrews 12, 25. This is in this book of Christ, Christ and his church in prophecy. It is in French, it is in English for whatever how you want to read it. See that ye refuse not him that speaks, but even escape not who refuse him that spoke on earth, much more shall we shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaks from heaven. He does not say anything about refusing him who saved or heals us. Or better again, okay, I will explain after. We said that this is not talking he's talking about because he's talking about the three dispensation of Jesus Christ. He came, he's coming as a son of man, coming as a son of David and the son, son of God. As a son of man, it is a prophet. It was God prophet. It is why we call him always Jesus Christ, a son of man. Or oh, God is calling his prophet son of man or son of man. As a son of uh, David, you remember this, uh, this uh, woman who came and said, Son of David, help me because she, uh, her child was, uh, was sick. He didn't want even to look at her. She was, she was, a, she was a, a, a woman from the nations. He didn't want to look at her because he's. She, she didn't have no right on him by calling him son of David. She was from the nations. And we as nation, people from nations, we don't have to go to address Jesus Christ as son of David. This is, some, uh, this is a position God gave to the Jews. When we come to him to, to ask him as our Lord, and so he's coming, son of David, it is because he's going to inherit, I'm going to read it with you maybe shortly, the throne of David in the millennium. Remember, even in uh, uh, his disciple, you know, if you read in the book of uh, Acts, chapter 1, verse 5 and 6, when Jesus Christ was speaking, his disciple asked him, Lord, is it when you're going to establish the kingdom of, of David? I'm going to uh, let me read it if you so. You know, you keep these things. Acts, chapter 1. Um, verse 5 first and verse 6 try to write those things and study them home mm -hmm. say uh, mm -hmm. for John truly baptized with water but she shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. so it's taking them not for weeks but said in few days you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost when they, uh, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time, when John Baptist will do it, restore again the kingdom of Israel? Because they were expecting him. You remember when he was going to Jerusalem for Bethphage? It was in, um, I think it was in uh, uh, Luke chapter 12. No, is it 12? No, no, 12. Uh, it is after the resurrection of, uh, of Lazarus. Yeah, Lazarus, I think it is a church. He said uh, they, were, they wanted to make him a king because they expected that he was going to establish the kingdom of uh, Israel, uh, of David, but to its, uh, its, uh, its greatness. But he didn't, say, he didn't do it. He just walked away because it was not at the time. And so he's coming as a son of David. That is why he was born in Bethlehem. He was born in the family of David. Remember Joseph went to Bethlehem because he was the family of David. And Jesus Christ was born as a son of David. And as a son of David, he will sit on the throne of David in the millennium. Do you remember in uh, 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 you know, no, I'm here. Let's me give you more quotation and you will read it. Take uh, Daniel chapter 9. <clears throat> 
Daniel chapter 9. It is when we talk about the 70 weeks of Daniel. Oh, we'll be calling of Daniel, but yeah. It is the time when God will provide us to, we will we study about them. It is the time for redemption for Israel. God gave them 70 weeks for the deliverance, for the total redemption. Verse 25, Daniel, and 26. Now therefore, it is the, <coughs> Gabriel speaking to Daniel, the angel of Daniel. Now therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, it is this, this is when this uh, the temple of, of, um, of, uh, of Solomon was destroyed. The people were deported to Babylon. And then now they came back now for the time of the going to rebuild the church, the temple, to the Messiah now, when the Messiah was going to be born. To the Messiah, the priest shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in trouble, troubles times. So it is going to be 69 weeks. Continue, May verse 29. We will study it after. And after three score and two weeks, shall the Messiah be cut off. It is when Jesus Christ is gone. He was being uh, killed. But not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come and shall come, shall come, uh, shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a throat. And unto, uh, uh, unto the end, and the old desolation are determined. Um, yeah, it is a, it's, it's a translation sometimes, it's very funny. Let's try to it. So something is missing here in English, because you see, in, in um, See, if you read in French, I'm going to translate it for what is written in French. Because something is missing in English. I don't know, I don't know what is happening about translations. So, after the, uh, the, the uh, 62 weeks, an anointed, which is the Messiah, will be uh, cut off and won't have no successor. It is what is missing there. Said, but not for himself. But nobody will take a place as a king no more. Israel didn't have no king since Jesus Christ left. No, but the successor. And then what is say? What is say? The people down per chef qui viendra, which means that a prince will come and then they didn't have no because when Christ came and when the, he was he's the king and nobody else could take the place because now he came. And he will sit on the throne. It was like David. When David was, uh, was anointed as a king, he didn't become king. They did not uh, crown him as a king the same day. And that is what is happening here. And uh, there won't be <coughs> no, uh, nobody sitting in Israel as a king until Jesus Christ comes again. That is something you have to know. And so Israel is expecting Jesus as a son of David. Jesus Christ is called in the world as a son of God because he's our savior. As son of God, he saved us. But son of man, is he's a, a prophet, God prophet. So let's be continue with what Bob is explaining. So you, you understand what he's saying this? He, doesn't say, he does not say anything about refusing him who saved or heals us. But him that speaks, the prophet, the son of man, it is a very serious thing if the Lord God speaks and his people do not hearken unto his voice. If God is speaking, so the one who is speaking from heaven, it is not an, an angel. It is the same God who spoke on Mount Sinai. Now he's speaking from heaven. The Holy Spirit from heaven. He's speaking, telling people, this is what I'm doing now. This is the plan for salvation. This is what we have to do. And if you don't listen to it, 
God is saying he will just call himself, he will get with you in judgment for not listening to his message, not listening to his voice. Brothers and sisters, what we want to say here it is that, okay, we know the unbelievers, they don't want to listen, they don't want to do this, but now it is a question of to be obedient to what God is saying. And to be obedient to God is saying, it is all like the boy who just read the son, my soul bless the Lord. Let everything within me, which means there's no domain which is a hidden domain where God cannot get in and speak to you. I gave you once a testimony of a lady, we went to visit her. She had some problems, she did call us, and a long time ago. So when we get in her house, <coughs> straight away she warned us, listen, you came here to speak to me about God, but don't try to get in my private life. I said, but how? You called us to speak to you, to help you, and straight away you gave us some boundaries. You're not, you're not supposed to speak about my private life. He said, no. When I start speaking, I said, I'm going to start to set away by this story, your private life. You cannot force me not to talk about God, about the Bible, and have some hidden corner, corner uh, places I cannot get. No. You call me to speak about God. So how are you announce for forbidding me from talking to you about the word of God in full? So our people are like that. We don't have to have some uh, some dark uh, some sports or things in our life, we don't want the pastor not to be involved, or the word of God not to touch us, but we want everything to be done in such a way that uh, God can be pleased to work with us and to join with, with us during our journey on this earth. And so now, uh, there's something where God is speaking, so I'm going back to Hebrews chapter 25. Hebrews 25. Say that no, we should not refuse to listen to one speaking from heaven. Take 25 and 26. Even I'm going till 28. You do this. Yeah. See that he refused not him that speaks. If they escape not who refuse him that speak on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speak from heaven. Beloved, there's a question here. As I said, God was not happy after speaking to, because even Moses told his brothers, which nation has a God who has gods? who was close to them like the Lord is with us. And we women can we heard the voice of a God and we didn't die. This ain't despite of it, but they still walk away from God. They didn't listen. They didn't want to obey. So the Bible is saying that they didn't escape. So now, God said when he came, he said he shook the heaven. No, he shook the earth. But now when he comes, it is what I'm going to read now. Whose voice then shook the earth, but not, but now he had promise saying, yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. What is happening? Because the expression is here. And this word, yet once more, signified the removing of those things that are shaken. As of things that are May that uh, that was thing which cannot be shaken may remain. So we are telling us that God shook the earth and uh, the, and, uh, and we shook again the heaven because there are things which are temporary. As we are here on earth, just temporary, for that He will put in place the things which are eternal. And to put the things which are eternal. And that is why he's even saying verse 28, wherefore, we're receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. 
Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Can you understand? Because he's going to move away the things which are, can be shaken. To put in place the thing which cannot be removed. A kingdom which will not pass away. A life which cannot pass away. So that is why we have now knowing that we are going to receive this kingdom which cannot be shaken. So let us serve now God. Um, let, us, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and goodly fear. It is so important to understand it. You know, uh, in the book of uh, uh, Haji, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it properly. It is just before the book before the last in uh, in uh, after before Zachariah, Zachariah chapter two. Yeah, it. Chapter two. He's saying this. I'm going to read from verse one. In the seventh month, in the uh, in the one and twentieth day of uh, month, came the Lord the word of the Lord by the prophet again, saying, "Speak not to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel." Shilti governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of uh, Jotzedek, the high priest, and to the re uh, residue of the people, saying, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? It is not in your eyes in comparison as of it as nothing. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, said the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua. Son of Shotzedek, the high priest. And be strong, all your people of, of the land, said the Lord. And walk for, and walk. For I am with you, said the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I covenant with you when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remained among you, fear ye not. For thus said the Lord of hosts, yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heaven and the earth, and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, said the Lord of hosts. So he's saying, when he will restore, make this, uh, this, this temple, his house, because his wife, this prophet was sent for, because the people, when they came from the deportation, they did forget to rebuild the temple of the Lord. And even when the God, God tell them, who among you was old enough to remember the glory of the temple of Solomon compared to what you did? The glory is not the same. This is like nothing. But time is going to come when I'm going to shake the heaven and the earth. And the glory of the temple I'm going to build will be greater than the one you're talking about. Do you understand it? How is going to do it? Uh, wait. I'm going to take it. I prefer to read it in Joel chapter 2. Joel is after uh, Jose. Jose. Uh, Jose uh, No, no, chapter 3, sorry, I said chapter, chapter 3. Go verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. This is after the rapture. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. It is when the battle of Armageddon is going to take place. 
Video, uh, video uh, plushes into salt and your uh, pouring hoax into spears. Let the weak say, the weak say I am strong. Assemble yourself and come, all ye hidden, and gather yourself together round about. Tiva, uh, I don't know how you say it, Mother. Tiva. Cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the hidden be wicked and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will seek to judge all the hidden round about. And he said, put here in the, uh, put here in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come get, uh, come get you down, for the, uh, the quest is full. The fat of the floor for the weakness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of, of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of <clears throat> decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw the shining. The Lord, uh, the Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. Listen. And the heavens and the earth will shake. You understand? Will shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Amen. He said, when he will come to judge the nations which are surrounding Israel, which are fighting Israel, he said, he will gather Russia, everybody will come, and he will punish them. He said, the day, the earth and the, uh, the, the heaven, sorry, and the earth will be shaken. When he will judge it, before putting down, bringing the millennium. With his temple, which will be more much glorious than the temple of of uh, of uh, of Solomon, and by doing that, said that this is when we are getting we are the people of his kingdom. Because when we read in uh, in Zechariah the Roman chapter seven, he will put together the people of a nation with Israel in the same place. It is his people. So as we are receiving an unshakable kingdom. Let us know, serve God with reverence and fear. Knowing that we are going to be someplace where we won't be shaken ourselves. Where when we stand and serve God in such a way that the Lord himself will be pleased of our testimonies. That is why knowing that we have a duty, not a duty as a uh, People who are obliged to fulfill a task. It is like, you know, being a human, you are smoking drugs or, or taking things which are going to destroy your own being. But the duty we have, it is that we have a life to live. And this life we have to live we have to live it according to good God rules. It is all we have to do. In our houses, everything of art we have to, 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 to do, we have to think is the words. Go agreeing this what I'm going to do. Before speaking, say, Lord, is it in your balance what I'm going to say? Is it correct? So when we can come to the position, what like Job was doing, he was controlling all his acts, even for his children. Said maybe they done something wrong. He was going to pay for giving the sacrifice to God. Said maybe they done something wrong. Maybe in the heart, they don't know. They thought what was not supposed to be done, and God did like it. He said this man had the fear of the Lord. Our fear must not be in front of men. Even when I'm by myself, I'm sitting in a public transport, I'm saying different things. I said, Lord, me, I cannot join this. I cannot join that because I have on me the fear of the Lord. I cannot, you know, like the Jews. According to what Peter was saying when he went to corner, before going to corner, uh, corner place, 
He saw this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, how can it, this, uh, this plot coming down with uh, all kind of uh, unclean animals. He said, no, I've never done something like that. I'm a Jew. I cannot eat unclean, unclean animals. God tells him no. You know, because for them obeying God, it was to don't eat rats, don't eat pork, don't eat. But God told him, it is not what I was talking about. So can we do the same? Not to go, I'm not talking about food. But regarding the word of the Lord, walking in faith, he said, Lord, and my still doing what really is pleasing you. You know, when you are working with the Lord and you are doing what is pleasing him, you don't need it. Your pastor wants to tell you it. God himself will, will tell you. You will find yourself in peace with God. You go up, your heart won't condemn you at all. You will be feeling just someone happy. Walk with the Lord. A child of God, when he is doing something wrong, straight away he knows it. The spirit is telling you, mm -mm, I didn't agree with that. You don't need someone to tell you. No, you know it by yourself. Straight away, that what you don't do. Well, even maybe you, did, you just have a thought, nah, oh, I don't like this. The sister, she said, God is telling me, I didn't like it. I didn't like what you said. I didn't like what you did. It is that fear we have to, uh, we must have, uh, because we are going to receive a kingdom which will remain. You see, as I was reading just now, even if you read in, uh, in Genesis chapter nine, uh, 49, when uh, Jacob is blessing his uh, children, giving a prophecy about them, if you take it, He said, verse 10, 90, uh, uh, said, uh, Genesis 49, what this? Sorry, 49, verse 10. He's saying, the scepter, I call is this guy Yes. Yes. Shall not depart from Judah, <coughs> nor a uh, lawgiver from between his feet. Until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the government of the people be. <coughs> you know, when God called the first king, Israel asked to have, uh, to have a king like all the rest of the nations. God gave him soul from, he was from Benjamin. But when you read the prophecy about Benjamin, there were nothing regarding the uh, 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 being a king, you're doing it too much, can you? Okay. But this thing was given to Judah. And the Bible is saying, this scepter will not depart from Judah until come the Messiah. That is why all the kings we had in Israel when we were the division in the kingdom of uh, they were just people making mistakes, but true, the kingdom, the true kingdom, was from, in, in, uh, from uh, the family of David. And that could not, it, it could not leave Judah until comes, until comes the Shiloh. And then all the people, we obey him. And nobody else could take it. That is why when he comes out, when you're going to crown him king of kings, Lord of the Lords, we are going to receive a, uh, um, to receive this uh, this kingdom with a temple which will not pass. That is why I said, if you are going to receive something unshakable, it won't shake, it won't move. So we must serve God with fear, with respect. Reference it is respect, knowing that He made us for the purpose. Can you imagine the day when we will be sitting there? Sitting by his side, serving him, judging the nations, and you are sitting there, you will ask yourself, well, how did I come to this position? How did I reach this position to sit here and judge the, the rest of the nations? Just grace. That is why we have you from here ask God to reveal to us the respect for. For his person, for his word, for everything. 
And that will help us even to support the enemies. To love them. Because they don't know they are just people led by the, by the devil. And it is the devil fighting us. If you can understand it, it will be very easy to support the, the, the enemies, the, the, over, the opposition. When uh, this man, uh, um, called him in French, Chimney, was insulting David, David knew what was the problem. He started, he started, leave that man alone. It is God who told him to do it. It is me who is faulty, not him. It, God told him to do it. If David decided to cut his head, he could do it. But what's called the problem with God? The same way if David did accept to go to kill the king's soul, he could do it. God give him the problem. And the man was sleeping. It was just easy to take the sword and poof, and run away. But when he was going to do it, God told him, told him send me here to do it. Don't do it. We have to serve God with fear. Even if our enemy is just given to us so that we can do anything we want to him, just try to remember God didn't ask you to be a judge, to be the lawgiver, to be the, uh, the to kill other people. No. God, God wants to see you forgiving them. And when you do like that, God will remember. No. I was listening to this uh, experience Brother Barnum had. God is really looking even to the smallest things you can do. He was going in uh, to hunt the animals, was killing uh, different animals for his friends and uh, so forth. And then um, he promised that he won't do it no more. So the day when uh, he went, uh, he went once, to, he was uh, hunting, and uh, it is the day when God, when he saw these three rainbows, and God, God told him that uh, the Jehovah of, uh, of the Old Testament is Jesus Christ in the New. And then when he was standing there, he saw a deer with three uh, fur. I call it uh, with three, uh, three, three, I, can't, uh, I don't have to say it. With two, no, no, with two, um, two, two babies. So he said we were looking for three of them. He may need one, his brothers need two. So when he looked, it was a test. God was going to see if he was going to remember what he did promise to God. So he said, he took, he said, oh. So just get the number we need because they didn't have no, they didn't find the catch the animals at all. Just the number we need. So if I kill one for me, one for whatever other brothers. And the woman said, no, 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 God, I didn't promise you. No, dear, I said, dear mother, take your children and go away. You are just, I can kill you, but I won't do it because I promised God that I won't do it. But the animals were just standing looking at me. I said, thank you, kill your children. And walk away. The animal, she, it, she, 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 the man took the children, went away, and then came back and looked at him again. He said, I can shoot you, but I promise to God I will never do it again. Small things, fear of the Lord. We have to remember what you're saying to God and accomplish the promise you made to him. Uh, and when the day left, God told him, You remember, you didn't forget. Because you've done this, I'm going to do this to you. Because you didn't forget what you told me, you didn't kill this deer. Can you understand? Small things. And God is, is honoring his servant because he didn't kill the, the deer. He could kill it. He did it too. But God will tell him, you are not a good man. You don't, you don't keep your promises. So you want me to keep my mind. I cannot keep them. So, beloved, what we want just to say here, we are going to receive a kingdom which is, will not be shaken. God himself will be there. And even after in the new Jerusalem, he said there were no temple in it because the Lord and the Lamb is the temple. Can you understand? Who is going to shake God? Who is going to move God? And this is where we are going. 
knowing that we have a strong position. That is why I'm determined to live the law of the word of the Lord. And not just to pretend that oh, I'm preaching. It is not that it's interesting me. People are preaching sometimes for money. For, for to, be, to be famous. But you know, both uh, um, Jesus Christ, who can compare his ministry to the ministry of Jesus Christ? Who is the first? He's the top first. Jesus Christ didn't have no money on him. Can you imagine it? He didn't, he didn't have no money in his pocket. They came to ask him to pay the tax. He didn't have. He had to go to ask uh, Peter, go to ask the fish to give him the money. Can you imagine such a thing? When he has to walk to Jerusalem, he just, he just needed a, 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 a public transport if I can say so. He didn't have none. He said, okay, when you get to the village in front of us, there's an ass which is tied up to a tree, just uh, uh, untie it and bring it to me. If they ask you, they only ask you. He didn't have his own. He had to, to go and ask a donkey for me someone. Can you imagine it? Such a ministry that's the one he had. I was always wondering why he didn't have even a horse or a donkey just when he was going from village to village to, 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 to sit on it. No, he was working. When he went, we had to bury him. And then the brother, it, it, was, it was just breaking my heart. He even didn't have no place to, to be buried in. They had to take a place belonging to someone, to, to Simon. To bury him. It was, it was, a, it was a Simon, I don't know, he didn't uh, maybe prepare a place for himself or for his family. It is why they went to put Jesus Christ. Even to get buried, he didn't have no place. Such a ministry. But we are fighting sometimes. I want to be famous. I want everybody to know me. I want to, I want to, to, to have a lot of money. I want to, to, to travel in jets. I want to travel in big cars. Like my brother is telling us, uh, uh, mini, uh, this minister who told uh, his church that had to buy him, uh, uh, I don't know which car it was. Uh, yeah. Can you imagine? This? We have to serve God with fear. Uh. My duty as a minister, it is not to have money, but it is to save souls. Amen. Uh, it is to preach the gospel for the people to believe and to come to Jesus Christ. That is my, my reward. Amen. If I can bring more people, more sinners to, go, to God, that I can, when I get to heaven, say, Lord, I don't know what I have to do. But beside that, Oh, pay me thousand uh, uh, or million pounds per, 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 per month or per year. What? When I die, I'm going to work with money. It don't help me. I don't need it. Look at all the prophets of God. They didn't have nothing. Look, uh, um, Elisha. Elisha. He needed the coat of Elijah. It is when he went, it is the court. He, he could not go to buy his own. No. The court, he saw, they show him the court. Okay, keep the court because he will need it. I don't need no more. <laughs> With such a ministry as like that one. If I just said, we may need this because we never know. Maybe we will be caught. It's of a court. Can you imagine, brothers? God didn't send us here to, for those things. If he can give me money, a car, thank you Lord, we should not complain, thank you Lord, but if I don't hear it, thank you Lord too, because my purpose it is not to get car, it is not to work, to, to, to drive, to, 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 to fly in the, in the thing, if God, I'm saying brothers some ministers they are just wasting the ministries, because now they want all of them, I said oh, we are in the uh, as I call them, said the ministry of in the body of Jesus Christ. So, which means they are traveling here, even when God didn't send you there. What is the, the importance of traveling if you, you go to America, you go to India, if God didn't send you there? 
Oh, because uh, they want, I have my, we have to know my ministries. I don't need it. If God doesn't want my ministry to be recognized to, for in India or in Australia, why am I forcing myself to go in? If God just wants me to stay in this church, preach only here. Let me recognize where God wants me to be effective. Amen. We have to serve God with fear. We have now, because that is why we have a lot of competition between ministers. Oh, me, I'm making a convention. Everybody is coming to my convention. And you make only two, two kids. And it is now. Okay, ask me, I have a lot of people, brothers coming to my, to my convention, which means I'm more important than him. And sometimes when you're listening to those people, it is just sad things they're saying. Because, you know, when someone gets a gift from God, you don't have to ask him to show it. When he just speaking, start to speak, maybe the two first words, it is enough. But the one who do who not have to, they like to talk a lot. But what I'm saying, we have to serve God with fear and with respect. When you go somewhere, just wait for God to use you. And when God is, you can maybe say only two words. That is enough. And you said maybe you send to, 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 to in the glory, maybe 10,000, 100 people, just with two words. May the Lord help us. Amen. We are receiving, we cannot refuse to listen to the one speaking to us from heaven. Because if you refuse to listen to the, what the Holy Spirit is doing even today, there's no way to escape. The Holy Spirit is acting according to the plan of salvation. And the plan of salvation, we go through it uh, as we are preaching now. In our time, it's this message you're preaching. Because this is the last message of God for the gentle before the gospel goes to the Jews. Can you imagine if you are living in the time of John the Baptist, you refuse to listen to John the Baptist, where we are going to be? If you are living in the time of uh, Jesus Christ, you refuse to listen to Jesus Christ, can you uh, imagine what was, what, was, what, uh, what was going to be your outcome? Just look at the Jews who refuse to listen to it. If you are in the time of uh, Saul of Tarsus, who became uh, Apostle Paul, what is going to happen to you? All those things, when God is speaking and you refuse, there's only tribulation waiting for you. Judgment is waiting for you. But you want to be among the overcomers who will go to meet Jesus Christ. And so that is why we have to work with fear and the big respect for the word of God. It is the most precious thing God gave to us, his word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, wonderful Lord, you say a word for you again, Lord, in this evening for the time you gave to us to come together, Lord, and to listen to these things, Lord. You, you want us to understand and to base our faith on. Lord, you know, nobody can understand your word if you don't help him, Lord. You are the truth, Lord, you are the way, you are the light, you are the wisdom, you are everything we need. You said the fear of the Lord it is what, and obeying to his commandment, that is what everybody, every man must, it is applies to everybody. Lord, but this thing we don't see it in this world today, because people have a lot of programs. But you are just begging the Lord to help us. To help us, Lord, to understand that without you, Lord, we are completely lost. Bless the children. Bless this congregation, Lord. Let help us when you go back to practice what we heard today. And what you're hearing in this church, Lord. Bless our meditation, Lord. Bless everything we do. We want to see you in our midst. We want to stand with you, Lord. Even if you stand with just a few, we have a few number of people, a little number of people, Lord, but we want to be sure that you are staying, staying with us. Bless uh, our children in school. Uh, we had again about all this assembly with it, speaking to the children about uh, evil things, Lord. 
Oh, Lord, I was talking about them on Sunday, I didn't know, but help us, Lord, help our children not to be completely defied by all those things, Lord, that the chief tried to force them to accept. We beg you those things, Lord, as we pray to you and recommend the rest of our journey on, on this earth in your hands in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Help them. So, amen. 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 May God bless you. I think you can stop here because I know that my sister is uh, getting very well to us. So, yeah. God bless you. Uh, we meet again on uh, Saturday, God willing. And until then, God will be sitting on. Amen. Okay. 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 Okay.